In this video, I'm going to walk you through the design process of designing a landing page. And I'm going to be using my recent app landing page, RhodesAudio.com, as an example. So essentially, I'm just going to show you how I came to this design and the process and tools I've used to build this. So quickly, let me just scroll through what the final product looks like. And you can see it's kind of simple. It just shows you what the app looks like has a couple features of the app here that are described, and then a couple of the use cases for the app, a frequently asked questions section, and then lastly, the call to action to sign up for the waiting list. So the first step for me when designing anything really is to go look at other people's products that are kind of similar or that I admire and get some inspiration from that. So in the case of a landing page, I actually like to go to landing pages of products that I actually pay for, because to me their landing page is at least good enough that I buy from them. Not to say that the landing page is the only reason that I will sign up for a subscription or something, but it is a good indicator that if I'm paying for it, then probably their landing page is decent. Let me give you two examples. One is Canva, which I do pay for, and it's great. I'm not sure their landing page is exactly what made me convert, but you can see their landing pages showing you exactly how their app works, which is very nice. And then it has just kind of like very minimal text, it gives you, you know, the different pricing options here. Also shows you other companies that are using it, which is nice. So kind of a lot more going on on the Canva's landing page. And really they're trying to get you to sign up for their product on the website. So it is slightly different than a mobile app landing page. A second one that I'll look at is ConvertKit. ConvertKit compared to Canva is a little simpler. I also pay for this service. And it's actually what I ended up using for the email sign up on the landing page. I think they have a pretty decent landing page. A lot of words though, like I don't know that I'm going to read necessarily all of that. Uh, one big thing for ConvertKit is kind of this piece here where they show all the different people that use ConvertKit. This is pretty big for me. I probably heard from it actually from Tim Ferriss originally. Also, I've heard of ConvertKit from other creators that use it. So kind of their word of mouth marketing, I feel like is pretty good or their, their way of getting one person to use it and then recommend it to another person kind of works well. They do have an affiliate program and now I'm an affiliate so they tied me into all of that as well. And now look at me here marketing it to you. But I do really like it so far. They have a good free tier so if you're interested in using that the link is down below. It's free to sign up. But their landing page is pretty good as well but again it's not for a mobile app so let's look at one for a mobile app now let's look at spotify's landing page here which is kind of in the similar vein of the app that i'm developing it's both they're both audio players obviously spotify is huge and everyone kind of knows it already but their landing page right here just has like a really nice call to action and the button immediately you can click and go to it it tells you very minimally like why you spotify this is something I kind of copied over on mine when I do the how this is unique, although maybe I could make it even more compact like Spotify. Uh, also, their, their kind of FAQ section here is something I also emulated down here with an FAQ. Then finally, they have their, their call to action, which is, is just to go to the app. So definitely Spotify's is more of a design that I copied because my app and my landing page more aligns with what Spotify's landing page is. So that's another thing to note, just because you do like a landing page, you wanna make sure it makes sense in your product. So if my product was more of a SaaS, then maybe the ConvertKit or Canva landing page would be something to model it off of. But since my product is a mobile app, it's better to actually look at the landing pages that other mobile apps, especially similar mobile apps are using and obviously going with ones that are bigger and work. So Spotify is a massive mobile app. So of course their landing page is going to be one of the better ones, or at least you would think it is one of the better ones. Essentially what I'm saying is if it works for Spotify, then it should work for me as well. After getting some inspiration from other companies, the next thing I do is also go on Dribbble and I'll just search designs. Dribbble is great because designers post up their concepts and different ideas and it's a good way to kind of get some free design resources. Of course, if you really like the design and you want a custom one, then I 100% recommend hiring one of the designers on there and working with them to actually get one of your designs done. It's a great resource to find a designer especially if you have zero interest in doing any design work yourself. Although if that's the case, I don't really know why you'd be watching this video because this is about designing your landing page yourself. 
Anyway, on Dribbble, I search for landing pages for apps and there's quite a few good ones. And I ultimately found this one, which I very much liked. Shout out to the designer here. I unfortunately, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name, but I'll link his account on Dribbble below and you can go check him out. The design here, as you can see, looks very similar to what ultimately is the Rhodes landing page right now. So I really liked this header with the three phones and I like these circle uh, things on the line because to me, it actually kind of reminds me of how the app works because the app is going to have an audio conversation and then other conversations kind of branching off of it. This design here was kind of my real jumping off point. After this step, once I kind of found what I liked here, I went and moved into Figma and kind of redesigned it in Figma to match my needs. This is all completely done in Figma. I re redesigned essentially this design in Figma, but just a little bit more custom. You'll notice kind of a lot of placeholder stuff here. So the images, I'm just using one example image that is repeated everywhere. The text is not actually the text that I'm going to use on the app. It's more just the, it's more just placeholder text. I know I want to have a title here and a subtitle here. And then I know I want the features and then these different headlines. When I'm designing it in Figma, I'm not worried about the exact wording of everything. It's more just the layout and the spacing and the font sizes and all that. So yeah, I went through and kind of designed all of this in Figma. I'm not really gonna go through a Figma tutorial because I think there's a lot of better resources online already. If you just go to Figma's YouTube page, there's a lot of good stuff there if you're completely new with Figma. Figma is a free tool that you can use to make these designs. Yeah, you can see even the use cases here is kind of incomplete. There's no icons and no text. I knew that I wanted to have like different cards like this and then kind of fill those last parts in at the end. Also the frequently asked questions and finally the call to action. So you can see all these images here are kind of just one duplicated image. I actually generate these images using this this Rotato app. And it basically lets you take screenshots from your app and drop them in here. And then you can create any position essentially and export the screenshots. Canva will also have some tools that let you do that if you're on the pro version. So if you already have Canva, you might be able to just use that. Canva is also really good with coming up with different image assets of stuff. This landing page is actually extremely simple and the only images are really the app images. But on other landing pages I built, like the one man startup website, I actually use Canva for all of these icons and you can customize all these image assets right within Canva and they have like a good library of, of things you can use. But Canva doesn't have as good of a library of the device phones that you can add your screenshots to. So that's where this Rotato actually for me is a lot better. Getting all your assets together too is something very important in this stage. So while my designs aren't all dragged and dropped into here, I did go ahead and create all of my designs that I'm going to actually use when developing the code. So me as a developer, this is a step I often skip is kind of going through all this design process and getting it as, as tied down as possible. You can see even in my Figma design, it's not 100% complete because you're going to get to some point where it's not worth putting in the extra effort to make your Figma design perfect. And you can kind of just tweak that in code. But I guess the main things that I would worry about when doing your Figma design are getting the main structure built out and not worrying as much about the fine details, again, like the wording. But one nice thing is you can quickly change the colors here and and quickly change stuff around, move stuff around, which definitely is quicker than doing it in code. But once you do like the way things look in your design, then it's time to actually go ahead and develop your landing page. I am planning to continue releasing videos on the process that I used to build this Rhodes landing page. The next steps are going to be actually talking about the programming aspect of it. So I built this with Next.js and in the next couple videos, I'm going to be telling you exactly how you can take this design and build it and deploy it. So if you're interested in following along with that, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can stay up to date with these new videos. <laughs>